on this episode of Living the Dream. Captain Jimmy Nelson travels to Rotan, Honduras in search of the elusive bonefish and the powerful permit. After searching the flats for bait crabs, he hits the open water looking to land a permit. This is Living the Dream with Captain Jimmy Nelson, presented by Salt Life. Live salty. Ah! Ooh, good fish. Woo! Hey! Man, what a fish. Wow. Doesn't get any better than Baja. This is awesome. What I'm talking about. We flew from Tampa to Roatan on Cayman Airways, and it's really not that bad of a flight. The place we stayed while we were on the island was West Bay Colonial Hotel, and it's conveniently located right there in West Bay. It has a nice restaurant right on site, a beautiful pool, and it's only a couple minute walk to the beach. It sits back when I'm inside her. There's so many things to do on the beach right there in front of our hotel. I mean, you see people there playing volleyball, they're parasailing, you see people on jet skis. After hitting the beach, Captain Jimmy, Jeff, and their guide, Raul, headed out to catch some crabs for bait. First thing we do when we set up to go for the permit and bonefish in Roatan, we go find a flat where there's shallow water, sand and grass kind of mixed, and we start looking for crabs. We need little crabs just a couple inches long that'll work good for permit and also bonefish. The smaller for the bonefish, the better. That right there is a good bonefish sized crab. Not too big, a permit will still eat them, but that's about the perfect size for a two to five pound bonefish. Tear that thing up. You can grab them with your hands or with some gloves, but it's better to get a nice net like this Promar net. Makes it a lot easier. We're gonna go ahead and throw that one in the bait bucket and try to catch some more. So once we did that, we jumped back in the boat and ran to a spot where we thought there would be some permit. Joined by Jeff, president of Salt Life and a resident of Roatan, Captain Jimmy and the crew head to the flats. While you're out there fishing for the bonefish and the permit on the flats, you'll notice in Roatan that there's a lot of mangroves. And mangroves are a sign that you have a very healthy fishery and a healthy island. One of your biggest enemies on the flats are these little mangrove shoots. They're awesome for the environment, but when you have a bonefish on and it's cutting through this stuff, it's very easy to get cut off. When you hook one, you just want your rod up as high as you can so your line's going over the top of those guys because if your line hits it and he's moving, it'll cut you off. There's little barnacles and all kinds of things growing on them, so they're pretty tough and sharp. If you just look through here, you can see all the little shoots sticking up, so there's a lot of obstacles if we hook a bonefish in here. With no luck in the shallow flats and determined to get Jeff his first permit, the guys decide to move to slightly deeper waters. One of the most important things you can do when you're sight fishing is have a good pair of polarized sunglasses. Like the Salt Life Optics that I have, they have so many cool features on them. The Zeiss lenses actually repel dirt and water, kind of like rain and you want to see the true colors when you're using your lenses in the water so you can tell what kind of fish you're spotting. As you can see, looking through this water here, everything looks the same. The bonefish, the permit, everything blends in with it. And these glasses can kind of just bring that fish out to help it pop a little bit. And we've just dropped from about a foot of water to about probably five or six feet here. These optics are gonna be the thing that's gonna help us catch this fish. Because if I can't see it, I can't put my bait on it to catch it. So we get to the first spot and we're just pulling along and looking for some permit. We did find one spot where there was some deeper permit that we saw swimming under the water. Jeff made a good cast of the permit, kind of waited on it, and then sure enough, it picked up his crab. He set the hook on it and he was fighting his first ever permit. Get it, get it, get it. Get it. There you go, you got it. <laughs> 
watching Jeff fight this fish and I'm just as excited as he is to see him reeling this fish in. <laughs> And this fish is taking him all over the place. And one of the most dangerous things about where he hooked this fish is it was in open water over the coral heads. So at any time, this fish could take him over one of these large coral heads and cut him off. Man, these things fight. I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into catching these fish. So when you get one hooked up, you want to do everything you can to make sure you don't lose it. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. So Jeff got that permit right next to the boat. I got the net on him, lifted him into the boat, and Jeff had his first permit right here in his backyard in Roatan. All right, there he is, man. Beautiful. Woo! What a Fantastic. fish, Jeff. Beautiful permit. My oh, first right. permit, Jimmy. That is awesome. First one of the day. Be here and experience that. That's with you. great, man. And right here in your backyard, right here in my backyard. That is awesome. We got this fish on a Tsunami 3000 shield. Um, they just came out. Jeff has a house here on Roatan. He's been wanting to catch a permit, caught plenty of bonefish, came out here with Captain Raoul, and it didn't take long at all. It didn't take long at all. That's why I always have a good pair of pliers on the boat. As you can see, this guy got that hook down real quick, right in the top of his mouth, right where it should be. I thought that was Look expert that. angler ship. Oh my gosh, great angler ship. If you see something neat here about a permit, they have kind of like people lips. See how soft they are, just real soft lips. Doesn't take much to hook them. Sometimes a circle hook will slide out, sometimes it won't. I prefer J hooks, but both work fine. This is a nice fish, man. A good, probably eight, 10 pound fish, maybe even a little bigger. You're watching Living the Dream with Captain Jimmy Nelson, presented by Salt Life. We'll be back for more Living the Dream right after the break. Living the Dream with Captain Jimmy Nelson is made possible by Salt Life. Live salty. Sea Deck. Your boat deserves Sea Deck. CNH Lures. Be a winner with CNH Lures. Yozuri. Fish the best. Angle Coolers. The original high performance cooler. And by Cressy. Since 1946. Captain Jimmy Nelson is fishing in Roatan, Honduras, in search of permit and bonefish, with Jeff, president of Salt Life. The guys grab some crabs and start sight fishing for these elusive fish. Determined to land Jeff his first ever permit, it wasn't long before they got the bite they were looking for. Jeff lives in Roatan, he has a house in Roatan, he also lives in the United States. So uh, being the owner of Salt Life and being able to pretty much live anywhere you want, this was his choice destination. So Roatan is a very special place for him and to be able to hook his first permit in his home waters was really a blessing. It's really a neat thing to do. All right, well there's that permit. We got him revived, he's good to go. Put up a great fight for Jeff and I'm not gonna prolong this anymore. We're gonna get out there and catch another one because there's all kinds of fish tailing right up here. The wind's picking up. We wanna get some before this wind really starts kicking up. Look at that fish, man. What a beautiful fish. After catching a nice permit, the team heads to shore to meet up with the crew from West Bay Divers to do some scuba diving. I've been to Roatan twice, and let me tell you, it's one of my favorite places to dive in the Caribbean. Diving in Roatan is absolutely fantastic. So we dove with West Bay divers when we were there on Roatan. They have an amazing inventory there. They have dive boats right there on site, so you can go to the shop, get set up, pick up all your gear, and they bring it down to the boat for you. All you have to do is get in the boat and go. So after we arrived at that first dive spot, we got set up and dropped in the water.
My name is Sia Sorrells Weatherford and I've been shooting underwater video for six years. So the reef here is considered one of the healthiest in the Mesoamerican area. Um, one of the reasons is because of the Roatan Marine Park, which was implemented 10 years ago. The reef has gotten significantly healthier since then. Some of my favorite things to see when I'm diving on Roatan are turtles. Obviously, they're a big favorite. Um, they're very chill, they're relaxed, and they don't really care that you're there watching them. We also get a lot of nice schools of fish that hang out right off the reef that really just look beautiful against the blue backdrop. Roatan is quite unique because we actually have year-round for diving. A lot of places it's pretty seasonal. While I generally focus my work with TV shows, I do do private video shoots for people as well when they're diving. We do nice videos of courses or private dives that we put together um, in 10-minute videos for people. They can contact us at info at roatanmedia.com or contact us on our Honduran or our US numbers as well. Every dive is different. It's a different experience. You will see healthy reefs, beautiful colorful fish, and you have an amazing experience. Hard coral and soft coral. And that's one of the things I really like to see when I'm diving is a healthy reef. Besides all of the coral, there's such a huge variety of fish there. different types of little fish and crustaceans and life on this coral. And these people here at the Marine Park really look after the reefs. They want to make sure that they're taken care of right. They educate you before you get on the boat. the biggest bonuses for West Bay divers is that they have the boats right there, you jump in the boats, you head out to dive sites, and I mean these guys are just on top of their game. They do everything they can to make your experience very convenient and very enjoyable. Living the Dream with Captain Jimmy Nelson is made possible by Salt Life Optics, unparalleled clarity and contrast. Cayman Islands Angling Club. Come experience sport fishing in paradise. Papa's Pilar. Never a spectator. Plantation on Crystal River. The place to stay and play along Florida's nature coast. And by American Fishing Wire. After the dive of a lifetime with the team at West Bay Divers, Captain Jimmy Nelson and Louisa head out the next morning with Captain Raul in search of the elusive bonefish. So what we're using out here for the bonefish and the permit is 20 pound top knot leader by Yozuri. And the reason we're using the 20 pound is because there's a lot of mangrove shoots and little coral heads and things out here. And if they're cutting across that, they can cut you off very easily. So you need a leader that's heavy enough to be able to slow them down. pulling along, we're kind of looking for fish, he's getting in and out of the boat, pulling the boat, just trying to get us to the areas where we can find some fish. And Louisa says, hey, I see a bonefish over there. Is that bonefish moving there or is that something else? So I spotted this gray tail on the water and I decided to make a cast at it. And Raul told her, no, it was just a box fish. But I had a good feeling it was a bonefish, so I, I casted it. It was a really good cast. Good cast. It didn't even spook the fish. And you know what? She went with her intuition. Uh, she went with her instinct. Set the hook on the fish, and it was on. There's a fish here. Good. Good job. Wow. I'm always excited with any fish I catch, and that day was no different. It's coming in a little easier now. It felt 
really good to be fighting the fish and they make long runs at first and it's just an exciting fish to catch. I think he's a little tired, but I'm not. So she's, she's kind of fighting this fish and getting it closer to the boat and she's excited and pumped that she kind of did this all on her own and she didn't want to go against what the guide said but she was sure of what she's seen. It's like a bone fish, yeah man. Feels like a good sign, I like it. Nice fish. Right. Now she's getting this fish closer to the boat and trying to get in a position to where I could actually land it for her. So the fish was there, I reached down and grabbed the fish and pulled it in the boat. Got it? I think so. Alright. Cradle him in there, look at that. Nice fish. Nice <laughs> look at that. J hook right there in the corner of his mouth. Got a little weight on this hook, a little different than the other one. The reason we did that is it just helps it cast a little farther with these light shrimp. And the only shrimp you can get here on the island, like he was hooked perfect, are uh, frozen shrimp. Good job. Nice fish. <laughs> After we took the hook out, I got ready to release the fish. All right, guys, so I'm about to release this really nice uh, bone fish here in beautiful Roatan, Honduras. There's tons more here in the flats, and I'm ready to catch another one. About ready to, about ready to go. Here he goes. Riding the thrill of another catch, Captain Jimmy and Louisa decide to relocate. As the clouds clear, the fish become more visible. Despite the sun's aid, the crew finds difficulty in spotting another fish. We did end up seeing some permit tails and seeing some stuff out of the water, but nothing let us get close to it. Raul would try to get close, he would pull up on him, and the fish would just take off. <sighs> I think they might have heard something because they just split for no reason. And one of the things that may have been causing that problem is that there was a lot of sargasm grass floating in the water, which is not typical for this area, but the wind shifted the wrong direction and it was blowing all this sargasm onto the flats, which creates shadows. So we pulled along and we seen a permit. He was kind of deep, but I slung my crab out in front of him, drifted it right back to him and it fell right in the perfect position. And he was checking it out, but he wasn't picking it up. And right now I'm like on edge because I really didn't want to miss this fish. So I kind of gave him a little bit of line. We weren't sure if he was going to be an eater or not. Oh, he sees it, he sees it. He did pick it up and he started moving off with it. I gave him just enough line, set the hook on him, and now I'm fighting this fish. Captain Jimmy Nelson is fishing in Roatan, Honduras, and he's hot on the trail of a permit. So we pulled along and we seen a permit. He was kind of deep, he was moving, but I slung my crab out in front of him, drifted it right back to him, and it fell right in the perfect position. And he was checking it out, but he wasn't picking it up. And right now, I'm like on edge, because I really didn't want to miss this fish, so I kind of gave him a little bit of line. We weren't sure if he was going to be an eater or not. Yeah, he's on it. No, he's on it. He's on it. He did pick it up and he started moving off with it. I gave him just enough line, set the hook on him, and now I'm fighting this fish. <laughs> oh, man, that's nice. Woo. I'm on a pretty good flat right here because there's not a whole lot that he can cut me off on. The main thing you'd have to look for out here is those mangrove shoots that are in closer to the mangroves that are behind me. What I got this fish on is the new Tsunami 3000 Shield, and I'm spooled up with 15 pound Dominate Tough Line Braid down to a 20 pound Yozuri Top Knot Fluorocarbon Leader. He's still probably about 70, 80 yards out. I just spooled this one up. So I'm fighting this permit, and it is just pulling out line. This uh, turtle grass, it just comes down to these little dips, like, these, like, like this little sand pits and holes in here. And if he goes down over the edge of one, they are covered in coral and covered in rocks. So it's very easy for him to cut me off. And I'm holding my rod up high as I can get it, and it's just going and running and running. He went deep, he went over that edge. There he goes, man. And I got that drag crank too, and he's peeling it out. Come on. Yeah, that drag, I can't put any more pressure on that drag. I'm fighting it for a couple minutes and it's still running and it's still a long ways out. I can crank this drag down, but I'll break my line. The shield rod is dynamite for fishing the flats. Amazing flex in the rod, super soft tip. I love it, you can feel everything that's happening. 
and he's coming right across the top of this grass flat now. He's sitting in about two feet of water, and his back's out of the water, so that's a good fish. Look at this fish, man. Look at the colors this thing lit up in the water. That's outstanding. So when I got that permit close enough to where I thought he was in landing distance to where he wasn't going to take another long run, I went ahead and jumped out of the boat so I could get down there with him. I got Raul down in the water as well, and I handed him my rod and went over there and grabbed my fish. The permit was a really good sized fish. It wasn't like a huge one, but it definitely wasn't a small one either. It was exactly what we were after. Raul, this is, in my opinion, the ultimate fish to catch on the flats. This is just a powerhouse fish right here, man. We got this hook to get him right here in this corner of the mouth, right where we wanted it. He's got these huge eyes, as you can see, just these gigantic eyes that they say are really good for spotting crabs. This one wasn't even tailing. He was swimming along. He wasn't ready to be caught. He wasn't eating. But you know what? When you stick a crab in his face, he's going to take it. It's like sticking a steak in front of me. You know, we're going to take it. We're going to eat it up, buddy. got to go with it. <laughs> I tell you what, you guys see those spikes coming right out of the top of his back. It's the same thing that a cobia has on its back. If you get nailed by that thing, it will leave a scar for life. But also, while you're fighting him, if your line rubs across that wrong, it'll cut your line off as well. What a beautiful fish. Wow. All right, let's send him home. After a long fight with a powerful permit, Captain Jimmy and Louisa enjoy one last sunset before packing their bags for Louisiana, where they'll tackle some big triple tail off the shallow rigs of Venice. For more fishing and diving action, follow along on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter at Captain Jimmy Nelson. Living the Dream with Captain Jimmy Nelson is brought to you by Salt Life. Live salty.